Transition metal complexes contain ions of the metals from the D block, starting with scandium and going down to element 112, copernicium. Though some chemists would argue that zinc, cadmium, mercury, and copernicium really shouldn't count as transition metals. Semantics notwithstanding, these compounds come in a huge variety of shapes, sizes, and arrangements, and we'll be exploring them for a few weeks. The defining and unifying characteristic of these complexes is that they contain transition metal ions, whose valence orbitals are d orbitals. Up to this point, we've focused almost exclusively on the s, p, and hybrid orbitals. So dealing with the d orbitals is a bit of a leap. In order to properly understand complexes of this type, we need to know what those orbitals look like. Every transition metal has five valence d orbitals. They're called the dxy, dxz, dyz, dx squared minus y squared, and dz squared orbitals. And they look like this. If the transition metal ion's nucleus is at the origin of a three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate space, the dxz, dxy, and dyz orbitals all look like four-leaf clovers with the lobes of each orbital pointing between the axes that are part of their names. The dx squared minus y squared orbital has a similar shape, like a four-leaf clover, but points directly along the x and y axes. The dz squared orbital is the weird one. It has two lobes that point directly along the z axis and a torus shaped like a donut that wraps around its center in the xy plane. Because these valence orbitals point in all directions, and because they are substantially larger than the valence orbitals of most of the atoms we've focused on so far, Transition metal complexes can adopt a wide range of geometries when, it, when they bind to things we call ligands. While they certainly have the familiar linear, trigonal planar, and tetrahedral geometries, there are several other common geometries for transition metal complexes. Among the most common are octahedral, in which six ligands bind like this, two along each axis, square planar, in which four ligands arrange themselves 90 degrees apart from each other in the xy plane, and trigonal bipyramidal, in which two ligands are 180 degrees apart on the z-axis, and the other three ligands are all in the xy plane 120 degrees from each other. Many other geometries are possible, but these, along with the more familiar linear and tetrahedral, are the most common. The bonds between transition metal ions and their ligands are typically thought of as Lewis acid, Lewis base pairs, in which the ligand offers a pair of electrons to the metal ion. These bonds are often called coordinate, coordinate covalent, or dative bonds, because they usually come from the ligand coordinating or binding to the metal. As a result, these complexes are often referred to as coordination complexes. It's important to realize that these types of bonds are polar covalent bonds, not truly ionic bonds. The electrons are truly shared between the metal and the ligand, even if they originally both came from the ligand.